clerk will read the amendment. Amendment by Anchia. Chair recognizes Representative Chia. Thank you, Mr. Uh, Speaker and members. Um, Representative Farney's bill deals with delayed birth certificates. Um, this amendment is likely not germane, but she's been kind enough to allow me to lay it out, and I'm going to withdraw it at the end of this layout. But this deals, members, with the personal privilege speech that I gave a, key, a few weeks ago. Because the issues that Representative Farney discussed in terms of the hardship of children related to this delayed birth certificate are identical to the ones that children with an inaccurate birth certificate, inaccurate supplemental birth certificate, feel. So Mr. members, Speaker? I just want to take a couple of minutes of your time and then I'm going to withdraw the amendment. Okay. But I want to let you know that there are more than 7 million children living in the state of Texas and about 31,000 of those are in foster care. In 2014, of those 31,000 members, only 5,000 were adopted. Last year alone, almost 151 children, or over 150 children, died from abuse or neglect while in foster care or elsewhere in the CPS system. Members, the bill that the State Affairs Committee was kind enough to pass out and sits in calendars today is effectively the amendment I have before you and I draw your attention to the screens in front of you so that you can take a look at the language and how easy a fix would be in this situation. It was discussed earlier that birth certificates are recognized as a universal proof of a child's identity and parentage and are necessary in various situations where parentage must be proven. So when you take a kid to the doctor, or you need to list an emergency contact for a child, or you need to conduct a financial transaction, you need to enroll a child in school, you need to secure health insurance for a child, you need to pass through airport security with a lab child, or even obtain a passport. If you don't have an accurate supplemental birth certificate because your parents are, this, are of the same gender, you experience hardship, the same hardships that Representative Farney talked about with her bill. Now, members, I want to introduce you to a couple of kids. <laughs> members, Representative Stickland raises a point of order on the, on the amendment. Members, Representative Stickland raised a point of order. He has withdrawn the point of order. Representative Chia is recognized. Thank you, members. I, I won't be much longer. I only had a few more moments to speak, but the children that, uh, that I'm talking about are beautiful kids, and their story should be told on this House floor. They're the children of the Lutz Stein family. These three adopted children otherwise would have been in CPS. Two of these children are deaf. They're 18, 12, and 11. And they were adopted by parents who happen to be of the same gender and are in a loving family today. We're also talking about the Rasmus and Ford family. These are beautiful children. They deserve to have a birth certificate that reflects their true family. The only reason they can't get one is because their parents who have adopted them are of the same gender. And I, and I wish we'd just open our hearts. Wish we'd quit worrying about the next election. Because I bet you if we all closed our eyes today and didn't look at the board and didn't look at your, your score sheet, just had your fingers on the buttons and you voted with your heart, you would might want to make things right for these kids. These kids have hardship. They've been in the child protective child protective services system. Kids die in that system. And we not only don't want to pass the law, we don't even want to have the discussion on the floor, so we call ports of order. These kids deserve their day on this floor. They pay for this place. This is their house. We say it every day. Ladies and gentlemen, this is your house. 
But do we really mean it? Do we really mean it with these kids? So members, I'm going to do what I said I was going to do and pull this down, but not before I leave you some words from Exodus 22. You shall not mistreat any widow or fatherless child. If you do mistreat them and they cry out to me, I will surely hear their cry. And I ask you members to look in your heart because we can do better than this, members. We should be doing right by these kids. They're the future of Texas. Thank you.